doing music like like all my life, but it just now started getting serious. Like the last couple of years, I got on national television with Party B, Chance Ti, Snoop Dogg. Um, it was a lot of different people that had to do with this uh, show that I was on. And then, um, cool, cool. I seen a guy like rapping on the corner. Mind you, I'm 16. You know? Damn. You know, he's rapping on the corner. I pay him in his bucket because I like what he's doing. He passes me the mic. I say, I start rapping and I didn't understand like why the people were coming. It was like 20 people, 30 people, 40 people. And he looks at me and he says, sell it. What do you mean sell it? Sell it. You're right. That's what I just started thinking strategically. Like, what's going on if you guys like the show, let the fuck know. I made 500 bucks and I went home with like 300 bucks. Wow. Just remind you that I was 16. I was just working at Burger King in high school. So I got my first $300 in four minutes. That, that, that move you made in high school, go ahead and take that test to finish it early. That already right there is showing you what you're about. Yeah. It's about business. It's about making the next move. Maybe, I'm not saying you're too big for school, but you knew what you wanted to do already. Yeah. I knew I knew that I knew that music was my my route. Like, I knew that that's what I, I, everyone has a reason, a placement. Whatever your placement is, you'll find out in time. But I feel like mine's was voice. Like, whether it's in public speaking, whether it's just your voice, pop, period. Speaking, yeah. Like, oh, there you what did you want to use your voice for? Like, what do you want your audience to hear? Like, hip-hop, but just not... When you think of hip-hop, you think of rap, right? But people need to have a better understanding of it. You know, hip-hop stands for healthy, independent people. Other people. Wow, I like that. Hip-hop, that's, that's my goal. You know, to get everyone to understand that it's not just rap. You can listen to country, you can listen to rap. Whatever you listen to, as long as you got hip-hop in your heart, healthy, independent people helping other people. You gotta help each other. Do you feel that's what helps you through all that hardship that you went through about your own personal life? Yeah, because it was moments where I felt like when I was on stage rapping and like, when I, I remember there was a moment where I just went black and I opened my eyes and I saw Cardi B and I was like, oh shit, I'm rapping in front of Cardi B. This is real life. And, then, and then Snoop Dogg got out of his chair and started dancing and it made me realize like, okay, I can really, I can really do this. So you were on a, a, a show. What show was this? It's the nationwide biggest Netflix series, rap series, and it's on Netflix right now. Called Netflix. And you think you have anything to do with those numbers? I think so. I think so. I think we all have something. Like, there you go. Okay. Like even Team you guys, we all did because you guys watched it. Someone has to watch it. Yeah. There you go. So I got the streams to watch it. Yeah, it I think the more the more nervous part was me for me was when I was actually booked for another show in Hollywood and I get a call, yo, check your email immediately. And I'm like, my publicist is never like uh, that. You know? So I check it immediately and it says Netflix. You have been accepted into the series. And I'm like, I emailed him back. I never even applied. He said one of your supporters sent, sent an audition video. Wow. So I got on the show through the grace of God through one of my fans. How did that make you feel? It made me feel crazy because I still don't know who that person is. You still don't know who that was? But I know it was someone that someone, someone that believed in you. Gave me that opportunity. Did you even know there was a, a show that was I heard about it and I thought it was cool. I was like, yeah, that shit's gonna be crazy. You know, I'm crazy. You thought it was gonna be cool for someone else. Yeah, I'm like somebody gonna win that shit, you know, they're gonna go crazy, they're gonna enjoy it. And um, it was eighty five hundred people out there tried out. Eighty five people made it. And the 85 went to the top 16, went to the top 5. Top How'd you do on the show? I was top 16. Top 16, there you go. But I'm coming back though, season 2. Is there going to be another show, another season? I can't necessarily say that, but when uh -uh. there is a season 2, when there is a season 2, you will see me. And going for the championship this time, going for the top spot. Straight legs getting cut off. So right after that, that allowed you to... Did you have music making? Were you making music already? Or did yeah. this provide you a platform you needed to it get started, to it? Like, it started, like, genuinely, it started out as a hobby. I was just in trouble so much. I, was, I, I really was a... I wouldn't... My dad probably wouldn't say I was a bad kid. But I was in and out of, like, juvenile and stuff. I was fighting all the time, like, you know? People was, like, messing with me. I didn't take it. Where'd you grow up in LA? Oregon. I was in Oregon, I went out to Chicago, I went to Atlanta, I was in El Paso, I was in Whoa, okay. everywhere, but Portland is what made me. That's you? That's your roots? That's cool. But 
kid, like I was grounded so much, my dad, he can take away the TV, he can take away the Xbox, he can take away all that, but he never could take away my brain, my poetry, and my real. That's what I say, your imagination and your heart was still there, so you can't take that. So my dad, yeah, we used to go at it, because he was like, yo, I can't even ground you. <laughs> like, you're still, still gonna do what you love. Yeah, that's awesome, which, which in turn helped you out to become your. So would you say the struggle, the, the ups and downs, that is what made you? Yeah, that's why I tell everyone too, because a lot of the like fans and supporters that jump on my live when I go streaming, like, they'll get on there and be like, yo, I'm going through something, depression, like I feel like I want to die, and I'll be like, just ease your brain, you know what I mean? It was a fan that talked to me, said he wanted to, like, you know, commit suicide, but he told me my music stopped him, you know, so that right there alone will just allow you to know how I will never quit because it's not even about me, it's for the fact that my sound is changing people's lives. Like, to help others. Do you feel accountable now with your music? You have to make it? I, I feel like the definition of making it is like, like um, it's not a competition if you're already winning. So if you're already winning, you already made it. You For won. Sure. You won. You won. You're crap. But your music, you make your music. Uh -huh. you, you hear people telling you it's a therapeutic music. Yeah, exactly. Do you feel you have to make, you have to continue because it's yeah. a movement. You're healthy. You're healing. It's almost, uh, you're almost representing mental health. Mm -hmm. yeah, I counselor. You, you got to. And not even just rap, like dance, being involved in music, any type of frequency of sound that's going towards your body. And you, and you can feel it, you really genuinely rock with that. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's medical attention right there. Yeah. So, that's awesome. So you got you have an album now. Yeah. It released. They just released in October 24th, which is my brother's birthday. We released it on September 7th. The party was on October 24th. So, so released it for your brother's birthday? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I mean, my brother, he uh, is an amazing dude. Uh, he, that's cool. Archie Moore, uh, that's my brother that's still here too. That's his brother, my brother. Shiloh. So what kind of, what's on the album? What, what can we expect to hear on the album? This is some, some cruise it's too? crazy. Some yeah, I it's got some music too. you can cruise to. I got a country single on there, a country pop song yeah, on the album. And it's probably doing more streams than all of them. So don't box you in nothing. No, your, your genre is yeah. people, music. Art. So that thing is called Rodeo. Y'all can go stream it right now on all solid platforms. Um, back to back with Darion Don from Chicago. He was on. Uh, Maury, he, he did a lot of like funny shit like growing up in his career, but good stuff. Like Terry Springer and stuff. Like that. <laughs> good stuff. But he's on my album on my profile and like Puget Sounds, which is huge. Seattle, they work some big moves, some big names. Definitely, I love, I love music. It's my life. So, so do I. That's what I've been looking into. Like I wanted to do something with art. I'm really into art and music is one of the But I don't know where to start. I'm more like a lyricist. I love to write and stuff like that. So like maybe like to rap, rap for years. You yeah. know. But I like to write. The only problem I have, like I play instruments too, but I'm not as in depth with it. I feel like I just want to be more of a voice. How often are you in the studio? That's the thing. I haven't started or gone anywhere to be like, just start to know there's beauty things for me right now. And that's why I was going to ask you, like, where did you start? How did you start? When did you get recognized? And what's it like being in the studio, man? What's it like to be in the Guitar studio? center. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Guitar center is probably one of the best places. That's like, you know, like when a kid goes to Disneyland and like they feel like they're in Disneyland. When I go to Guitar Center, I'm in Disneyland. You know what I mean? So I remember my dad, like, you'll hear me talk about my dad a lot. He was an impact on my life. Right there. Across the street was a Guitar Center. So anytime I would have time, I would leave the house. I'm young. My dad, like, you don't got no business. Where are you, where are you going? But like, I'll be back. I literally went to the Guitar Center to play the instrument. Piano that was on the guitars. I taught myself over time. And I worked at Burger King and I, I got my first check. And I was like, damn, it's only 160 bucks. What the fuck is this shit? So I was mad. Like, yeah. I said, get the next one. It was like 500 the next one. And I had a total of like $5,000. I went to Guitar Center and bought my own studio. Because the reason
reason why books and music correspond is because books have storyboards. Music has storyboards. Wow. So whatever you're thinking about at the time is going to come out, and it's probably going to be based off of whatever. That's what I did too, and I never really noticed that because I was just like, I never knew that that would have had such an impact because I'll be reading simple poetry, like one certain thing. Like a question, I mean to answer that answer with that question that you gave me, is hit, hit, hit my DM so we can have a writing session. I feel like that's a start, like us, us coming together in a studio or something and just writing for each other. I genuinely like like working with artists, especially. Hey, Divine Hustle. I better subscribe right now. Subscribe and show them some love. Divine Hustle.